Hello students, how are you? In the previous video, we have discussed about the importance of dates. Today, we will discuss about the periodization of history and how do we periodize Indian history. Why is periodization done? It helps us to understand the sequence of events that have occurred over a period of time and their effects. You have learned or you know that under the British rule, the Indians struggled to get independence and ultimately the Britishers had to leave India and we got independence. Second point is it helped us to understand the significant features of a particular period and the third point is it differentiates or demarcates one period from another period. You know that ancient period was different from modern period. The next topic is how do we periodize? James Mill, he was a Scottish economist and a political philosopher. He wrote a massive um, three volume book named A History of British India which was published in 1817. In that book, Bill divided Indian history into Hindu, Muslim and British period. Mill's view or Mill's, uh, Mill believed that all Euro-Asian societies were at a lower level of civilization than Europe. Mill, Mill did not have, did not have faith or did not believe that all that, that Asian there was any progress in Asian societies before the advent of British rule. So Mill believed that all Asian societies were at a lower level of civilization. According to Mill, before the British rule in India, Hindu and Muslim despots ruled over India. So Mill had divided history into Hindu, Muslim and British period because the rulers were either Hindu or Muslim or the Britishers when they came they started ruling over India. But the subject was not Hindu only or Muslim only. Simultaneously other faiths also existed. So this view of Mill was not accepted by many historians because he had wrong notions about Indians during the medieval and ancient period. He believed that there was no significant development during, during ancient and medieval period. Mill believed that India should be captured and ruled so that it, can, it, could, be, it could make progress. Another periodization of Indian history before British rule. There are other set of historians who divided Indian history into ancient, medieval and modern period. This concept was borrowed from the West and also had a set of problems because they believed that British period was modern period. How could we say that British period was modern period or, or, or Indians were getting freedom? liberty or equality during the British period? No, Indians were made poor. The British took away the wealth from India. Indians were not given any equality, liberty or, or freedom during the British rule. Those who spoke against the government were punished severely or they were hanged to death. So we could not say that British period was a modern period. Then the next topic is colonialization. Do you know what is the meaning of colonialization? It means that sub, uh, it means a process in which one country subjugates, means dominate another and thus brings changes in political, economic, social and cultural fields is known as colonialization and impose their values and customs over the Indian people. So this period is known as colonialization. Other sources of information. You know that how do we get information about the past or how do we get information about the British period. So Britishers believe in preserving official records. The act of writing started during the British period. They collected, they preserve all important documents. They all preserve all important policy agreement and kept in special rooms like archives and museums. They also attached special, ro uh, uh, special rooms or record rooms attached to all administ administrative institutions uh, like collectorate's office, the provincial secretariats, the law courts, etc. 
surveys become important. You know what is the meaning of survey? A study of the opinion, behavior, etc. of a group of people. So Britishers believe before knowing a country or before ruling a country, it should be, it, it has to be effectively known or it should be known before governing a country. The British, the British believed that a country had to be known thoroughly before it could be administered. So they conducted surveys, like revenue surveys were conducted in the villages. These were conducted to know the topography, the soil quality, the flora, the fauna, the local histories and the cropping pattern. How the, what, was, what type of soil was there or how the crops were grown. So this was necessary to know the method of administration for the for that region so they conducted surveys every 10 years from the end of 19th century census operations were held this prepared detailed records on the caste number of people religions and occupations of the provinces of india there were different types of surveys that is revenue survey botanical surveys zoological surveys archaeological surveys etc official records that how they, they kept uh, or what they wish to preserve in official records. They, the official records only tell us what the Britishers or what the official thought and what they wish to preserve for the future generation. So they did not keep the views of the common man. What they wish to preserve in official record was the views of the uh, governing people. Official records do not tell what other people in the country felt and what lay behind their action. Why did people start revolting? They did not write that. They only kept those which was important for them. And then other, the other topic is other sources. How do we get other sources? There are other sources from which we know about the common man. These other sources include diaries of different people. You know that pe many people have the habit of writing diaries. Accounts of pilgrims, those who came to India or uh, in uh, they, to, to visit holy places. Travelers, autobiographies of important personalities, popular booklets, newspaper, etc. So they gave us about the lives of common men. All these sources were produced by literate persons, those who knew to read and write. From this, we will not be able to understand how history was experienced and lived by the tribals and peasants the workers in the mines or the poor on the streets because they were not literate they did not have something to write so we do not know about those common men who were living on the road or those who were working in the field children we have sent the assignment please do that assignment okay thank you